Howdy folks, we are here to talk about the ending of the Glorious Revolution. Um, more particularly, we're going to talk about why the changes of the Glori Glorious Revolution were able to stick, why they were permanent changes. So, as always, your goal for the screencast is, at the end, you should be able to say, I can explain multiple reasons why the changes of the Glorious Revolution were permanent, not temporary changes. And you'll be able to prove this to me uh, through your notes, which can be in any form that you choose to take them in, bullet points, Cornell, or da, 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 concept map, or anything else. Um, any, any of that is fine. So, now that we've got the goal out of the way, why do we care if the changes were permanent or not? Well, like we talked about in class somewhat recently, your final project for this unit is going to be to take what you learned from the American, French, and Glorious Revolutions and take the, the lessons that you learn for why revolutions make permanent changes or why revolutions don't make permanent changes, and you're going to apply those lessons and give advice to the people of Libya or the people of Syria or the people of Tunisia or the people of Egypt, um, and that's going to be kind of half of half of your project is looking back and at, at these three old revolutions and making suggestions for the new or the newer Arab Spring revolutions that um, either have occurred or are still ongoing. So that's why this is important. Also, it's just interesting to try to figure out why permanent change happens happens in society. How do we know the changes of the Glorious Revolution stuck? Well, they created a constitutional monarchy where the king and the queen, William and Mary, were forced to share power with Parliament. So it wasn't an absolute monarchy where the king and queen had all the power. It was a shared, a, a division of power, Montesquieu would like it, between the king and the queen and Parliament. Now we know that these changes stuck because even today England is still ruled by a constitutional monarchy. They have a queen, but they also have a parliament. So we know that the, the big change in government was a sticky change for England. Far more people had access to far more power than before the Glorious Revolution when England was ruled by an absolute monarch. Now why did the Glorious Revolution stick? This was this Revolution was about gaining rights for all people, or for more people than previously had them. It wasn't about revenge for lacking past rights or revenge for previous wrongs in society. People were about rights, not about kind of getting back at other other people. Also, because it was about rights, there weren't English people who, after the revolution, went around and killed enemies or things like that. The king passed quietly from power and left the country, and then you had people who were just kind of happy to have more power. So there wasn't this giant wave of violence as, as the English people sought revenge on their previous leaders. Also, similar to this lack of revenge, there was a respect for the rule of law by King William, Queen Mary, Parliament, and the English people. There weren't, like I said, these, these people running around and, and taking justice into their own hands. People, people trusted the, the courts would bring justice to people that needed to that had, cre had committed wrongs in the past, but there weren't people out killing and, and avenging past wrongs. Another reason is that the Glorious Revolution included rulers that the English people were used to ruling their country. They were used to having a parliament. They had had one for almost 400 years. They were used to having a king and a queen. They had had a king and a queen forever. So the fact that there was a king and a queen and parliament and all of them had access to power was nothing new for the English people. So they, they weren't major changes. Parliament just had more power, but parliament was viewed as a legitimate institution by the English people. Also, there was a balance of power within the new government. The king and the queen had to share power with parliament, so there wasn't just one person or a small group of people who monopolized power. This is unlike uh, Oliver Cromwell, who ruled England as a dictator after uh, the pro-parliamentarian side won the English Civil War. So this is another reason why the Glorious Revolution and the changes of the Glorious Revolution stuck. So, hopefully... Now that you've watched this screencast, you can explain multiple reasons why the changes of the Glorious Revolution were permanent and not temporary changes in England. If you can't, hit rewind, go back, rewatch parts of it, rewatch all of it, or ask myself or one of your classmates a question. Remember, to prove that you've watched this, you can show me your notes in any form that you'd like. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.